2005 Chess Informant. Today I have a very interesting game played in 2004 between Francisco Vallejo Pons and Mihail Marin. Now I got this Chess Informant from 2005 when I was playing around 1500 strength and an interesting thing about this informant that I've just realized is that all these games are not computer checked because there's tons of lines given by uh, the grandmasters as their analysis that are just outright blunders. Uh, but nevertheless, Francisco Vallejo Pons was probably my favorite player at the time just because he played really creative, attacking, and brilliant chess. This is a game as white, and it starts in a ready opening with knight to f3, g6, d4, bishop to g7, developing that bishop, c4. So we're getting kind of a Zucker Tort, uh, Kings, Indian, ready uh, hybrid after c5, e4, and then d6. This game could go many ways. He can play d5, um, play bishop to e2, develop the knight, castle king side, start a king side attack, or even just play on the queen side. A lot of flexibility. After bishop to e2, knight to c6, Francisco Vallejo Pons always played somewhat unorthodox around this time, and he plays d5, allowing the knight to come forward to d4. He trades, and then we get the line pawn takes. So, of course, it's a slightly weakened pawn, but it is uh, supported by the bishop on g7, and it cuts into white's position on c3 and e3, controlling those squares, so he can't develop the knight. Um, of course, the drawback is that it can become a weak pawn, and white can attack it. After white castles, the queen sees an early development. Now, the normal line is knight to d2, and just playing on the queen side, maybe b3, a4, or even just bringing the knight in and trying to go for a c5 break. Instead, we see a novelty by Vallejo Pons with a4. Uh, now, the computer's rating this is just a normal move, um, this was given a brilliant mark in the informant, and the idea behind it really is to play a5, bring the knight in, and then either play b3 or bring the knight to b3, and again go for a c5 break. Uh, this queen can become a target of attack if it goes to c5, but instead black plays a5, cutting off all those options. So what do you think Vallejo Pons did here? Now, a normal player would just develop or even play b3, bring the bishop in, attacking the d4 pawn. But we're talking about Vallejo pawns here. Um, he plays the brilliant c5. Now, when I saw this move as a 1500, I thought it was just giving away a pawn. Um, but, of course, it is giving away a pawn. But I thought he was just giving away a pawn for some very, very deep idea that I couldn't understand. But looking upon it now, it's all about activity and a very simple idea whether the queen or the pawn takes, he's going to play bishop to b5 check, trade the bishop, or if the king moves, then he's accomplished his objective of reducing a black's activity because he can't castle. So Vallejo Pawns evaluates that as worth one pawn. The queen takes, and then we get bishop to b5 check, bishop up, bishop takes, and then king takes. So he's accomplished his objective of preventing the black king from castling, and now black will have some difficulty getting his rook out, as well as his knight. The queen comes in, threatening that b7 pawn, and Mihail Marin tries to complicate things, bringing his rook in. Now if the queen takes, the rook will attack the queen, and he'll win a piece. Um, the line would look like this, rook to c7, and then after queen takes, if the rook takes, then the queen has to come back, and white is down a piece. So of course we don't see that line, he doesn't take that pawn right away, um, but he will win a pawn with interest after bishop to d2, threatening this pawn. There's really no way to protect it because black really needs to focus on his development. Threatening the e4 pawn, the rook protects it, and now it looks like black might escape um, with an extra pawn because he'll move his king and set up a normal position. Instead, Francisco Vallejo Pons uses his time to develop the knight, and after the king moves back, it's basically one move too late. So after the rook comes in, threatening the queen, the knight comes in, and now, and now white is getting a ton of activity, 
Uh, the queen can't move here or here to protect the pawn because we'll see uh, rook to or knight to c7 check winning the queen. So he has to move back and now he's won his pawn with interest. White is way more active. The king is still sitting in the center and black's queen is completely inactive on b8. So the drawback of this position for black is that he's not very active. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for attack for white as well trade rooks and now tries to contest the c-file but after bishop to c7 white is almost completely winning the knight moves back because if the bishop takes we'll see a checkmate by black so let's not go for that instead we see rook to c4 attacking this pawn as well as protecting the rook and preparing to take the queen now the queen has to move and we see a white breakthrough with bishop take d6 so if the rook takes, which it does, then queen takes, and now the knight's threatening knight to c7, forking the king and the queen. Now if the pawn takes, then we see rook takes, queen takes, and then another fork of the king and the queen. So after rook takes, he really can't take that bishop. He has to move his king. The bishop goes forward, preparing something like d6, and now we see black try to strike back by moving his past pawn. He doesn't want to just take it right away because then black could take the a4 pawn. So Francisco Vallejo pawns consolidates it with b3. Uh, further advancing his pawn, white has to prevent that. And now we see knight to c5. Of course, he can't take because then the pawn would promote checkmating. And he can't really take here uh, because black would win a pawn and just get some counterplay. So after the brilliant move d6, he's going to try to break open black's position and further attack the king. Now we can't really take here because we get bishop check and then he wins the knight. So the queen comes over, but he still can't take that pawn because he'd get bishop check or he'd pin the queen if it took. So the king has to move and now white has a very dangerous pass pawn and after bishop to d6 threatening that knight of course he could take but then the queen would help promote his pawn and we get a checkmate so we don't want that either using tactics after the queen takes the knight takes on e4 and the game ends after queen to e2 so this is actually a blunder and it wasn't mentioned um, so queen to e2 it still wins but if the knight moves back we see black trying to defend, but eventually he has to give away his bishop because white would win this pawn and his past pawns would decide. So he gives away a bishop, and at the end of this line, white's winning easily. Um, but actually, after instead of queen to e2, there was a much quicker win that wasn't mentioned with queen to a5, uh, suddenly threatening queen to d8, and the strongest line of the computer is actually just to take this pawn. So there's really no options after queen to a5, but either way, white's winning, and we get a brilliant game by Francisco Vallejo Pons. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis. I tried to make it concise and clean, and I hope you subscribe and stick around for future videos. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.